What's going down, peoples? Yes, sir. <clears throat> I see you, baby. Give me a minute. Yo, I'm losing my voice, man. Damn. <clears throat> Doug is back in the building. Shook Knight in the building. Yo, I'm losing my voice, man. <clears throat> it just happened too, like, damn. Let me lower this so I don't have to yell as much. Think I'm losing my voice, man. Matter of fact, I am losing my voice. I'm hoping I can clear my throat before the show's over. Shout out to everybody, man. Yeah, X-Man and me gonna take care of this. Happy belated Thanksgiving. Enjoy the holidays. You know I'ma still work, but I gotta chill. I gotta not scream. That's what's fucking my voice up, man. You know I'ma go, baby. Let me let some more heads for them. Omar Vargas in the building. What's going on, big O? Happy belated Thanksgiving. Like I said, I'm losing my voice. But I'ma keep going. I was yelling yesterday via the games. I thought I had it back, but damn. Yeah, baby. TGI Friday, no drinking and driving, man. Ain't nothing changed, man. Like I said, I got to get my voice back. I'm hoping not to scream, but it's hard to, like, not put in major energy because that's what I do, man. Yeah, let me let a couple more people tap in, then we're going to start the show. X-Men in the building, happy belated Thanksgiving to everybody. You know we killing them on the free picks. It's like 25 and 8. And two times in the last, like, six weeks. It's all in the videos, baby. Games of the week, we got all that. Let me hope that my voice comes around, because sometimes it just got to clear up down here. I did the tea and everything. Appreciate you, brother. You know I got them, baby. All right, so we got a few people in the building. Let me shut this down here. Uh, let me say, start off by saying what's up and everything, man. I'm glad everybody's tuning in on a busy weekend because this is a holiday weekend, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Easy money, baby. And before I start anything, I want to direct y'all into uh, make sure y'all go into Instagram. I'm going to start hitting Instagram hard like I hit Facebook and YouTube. I've been lacking on the gram because I've been having my reasons, but I heard they just, you know, they got some new shit going on. So now it's time to take my services out there. It's time to take my service out there. Brian Breezy in the building. B4 in the building. I can't scream, y'all. I kind of lost my voice in the games yesterday. Uh, no excuse, though. I got to continue to give y'all this show, beautiful show. And like I said, it's only going to be me and Lumberjack X holding it down. We got a lot of information, but the less I scream, the better it's going to be. Yeah, I heard TikTok too, Suge, but my cousin's going to get me on that. But I'm hearing like, you know, they trying to like, what they do is they they, they steal all your information and sell it. Kind of like what Facebook was doing. But we're going to do more research. That's why I don't really want to go to those other joints because motherfuckers be taking you. They be taking you and shit. You know what I'm saying? They take you like all your government and all that. Yeah, but... uh. Let's start the show, and then we're going to get X-Man in the building. I don't see X-Man tapping in yet, but hopefully he'll tap in sooner than later. And like I said, I can't scream. I, I beg not to scream because I'm just going to lose my voice. We're going to start off with message of the day. You see, I got the new stand now, right? I'm able to back up my new stand where I don't have to be all up on the camera. Message of the day, continue loving the people who's loving you hard. It's real simple. Continue loving the people who's loving you hard. Stop chasing people. Stop chasing females. Stop chasing niggas. If you got to chase, especially if you're 35, 30 plus, then you in the wrong game, man. That chase shit is over. That's some 18, 19 year old shit when the girl don't have her mind made up. But when you're 35 plus and the people you fucking with is that old, you don't need to do no chasing. If you're chasing, they're not for you. Message of the day. Let me get this shit going. We're going to start the show, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Al York Sports. 
TGI Friday, baby, every Friday, I can't yell, man. I, I, I wish I had the motivation and the voice to yell, but I can't yell. Elvis in the building, what's going on? Who that nation? But like I said, guys, continue to love the people who's loving you. X-Men finally in. Stop chasing people. You 35 plus, fuck chasing people. You got to chase people, send their ass a lullaby. Love the people that's in front of you, that's loving you, that's showing you, that care for you. Those are the ones you give your love to. Not motherfuckers that you got to chase down, especially bitches. Excuse my language, man. Let's start it, man. Real simple, man. Not going to say it again. Stop chasing people. It's just not worth it. Give me a minute, guys. I'm looking for a certain paper here. I started all late because I was trying to get my throat fixed, man. I couldn't get my throat fixed. Try all the tea, all kind of shit. Okay, I can't find my other paper either, so... Shout out to the East Coast, West Coast, Midwest, New York City, LES to the death. Nueva yo, Nueva yo. Shout out to everybody, man. I don't have nothing in front of me, man. Uh, we're going to just say Mac one beat, Sam the man. Uh, what's my other shit I can't remember right now? I'm trying to freestyle it. I can't remember. Shout out to everybody. Like I said, go to YouTube, guys, for the uh, sports book reviews. The snack sessions, and make sure y'all go to Instagram, because I'm going to start feeding Instagram with a lot of content. I'm going to start feeding them. I already got into my first argument with some bird dude. Make a long story short, I told a nigga, I said, yo, what was it I did? I said the G-Man made a big mistake by letting go Saquon Barkley for nothing. And he said, oh, you real smart. So if they shine him, what they would have done, won two more games? I see what he's trying to say, but my point was, you don't give Danny Dimes the money. You give Saquon the money, you let Dimes go. You build around Saquon, not around Dimes. The organization fucked up. Then you could have signed and traded Saquon and at least got something back. Some draft choices, some now players. When you let them walk, dog, you got absolutely nothing, and then you let go Dimes anyway. That's the point I'm trying to make. But he must have been a Giant fan. He had to be a Giant fan that he didn't want to hear the truth. And you know I got nothing but the raw truth to help you, God. He didn't want to hear it. So I ended up fucking blocking his dumb ass because he started saying some other shit. And I ain't with the arguing shit online. And we can't see each other and pop off. Then I'm just blocking cats. I'm not with the extension or the extended arguments. It, it doesn't make no sense. It's just arguments. I don't want nothing to do with that. All right, let me move on real quick. The Kansas City Chiefs activated running back Isaiah Pacheco, as you've seen today. He didn't really have a good game. He had one big run, though. So they starting to get healthy again. They're 11-1. Uh, I wouldn't say they're clicking in those cylinders, but they winning. They winning ugly. Like today, they won ugly. I thought they should have lost today. Uh, that was handled at the end like the Bear game was handled. There's no excuses for that loss, uh, especially the way the Raiders came back. I thought the Raiders were going to come back and win, though I had Kansas City on a couple money lines, but I'm keeping it real. Raiders should have snuck up and stole that game, bad coaching, whatever you want to call it, bad teams, bad results. But Kansas City got Pacheco back, which is only going to make him better because last year he had 205 rushes, 935 yards, seven touchdowns, average 4.6, and in the postseason, 81 rushes, 313 yards, 3.9 average, and y'all know what he did. He handled his business in the playoffs. Good for Kansas City. The rich get richer. Other news. Free agent uh, left-handed uh, pitcher Blake Snell landed a big deal with the Dodgers. I said that in midweek. $182 million, five years, 36.4 year, and $52 million signing bonus. And a lot of this contract is deferred money, just like Otani. Other news. Left-handed starter UC Kikuchi and the LA Angels agree on a three-year deal worth 63 M. This is a good signing. Kikuchi's 500 last year gave up four, like a 4.6 earn run average. 
But you got to understand, he pitched in Toronto with the ball flies around over there. And even Minute Maid Park in Houston, though he pitched good in Houston, I guess better team, better results. But, you know, you put him in Anaheim in a not-so-small stadium, good left-handed pitcher, I could see Kikuchi having a good year. Like I said, he went 9-10 and 10 last year with a 4.05, 206 saves. Good signing by the L.A. Angels. Last but not least, former uh, New York Giants quarterback. I know Suge Knight cares nothing about this. Uh, Daniel Jones signs a contract with the Minnesota Vikings, and I think this is a big pickup for the Minnesota Vikings considering Kirk Cousins bounce. J.J. McCarthy, the, uh, the first-round pick, got hurt for the year, the, uh, the championship quarterback for the Michigan Wolverines, and then Sam Darnold happens. Sam Darnold's playing elite football, but if you put a veteran like Daniel Jones who needs to learn this offense sooner than later, just in case Darnold goes down, at least he can hold the fort somewhat. And unlike the Giants, he ain't got to carry the Giants. All he got to do is, is just game manage in Minnesota because they talented all over the field. Special teams, defense, and offensively, unlike the New York football Giants. X, where you at? Let me get my man X in the building. Hold up, I got this new device. Let me take this off. Make sure I don't fuck nothing up. Okay. X, where you at? I think my voice is starting to come back. Yeah, yeah, Vargas, the Bills are definitely playing. They definitely playing. Especially after beating these motherfuckers. Yeah, after beating the Kansas City Chiefs. So you know, you know, they they definitely gonna be the same thing. Shout out to everybody who tapped in. Steve Levine. Yeah, I needed that last touchdown, Steve. Got some points. There. X, you can hear me? I can hear you, brother. All right, let me put the thing on. Because I can hard I can hard. Hold up, X. I got this. What's up, brother? I'm really happy because uh, this shit is dope right here. Let me see your face. I guess you don't need there your you headphones. Go, now. There you go. I don't see. I just called you Lumberjack X for the first time today, <laughs> and now you shave all your fucking hair. So now I can't I, call you Lumberjack X. I had to, man. I had to. I had to. Everything good, baby? Everything is good, brother. God okay, happy good. belated Thanksgiving to you and your family. You, happy you, holidays. You your family. Yeah, we got Thank you. All the hungry people waiting for sports. I feel my voice coming around. I feel I got my you, voice brother. coming around. So we should be good. You. Ask you ready? All right. Yep, I got you, brother. Okay, we're going to start in four field yesterday. Four and seven bears, ten and one lines before the game finished. The line was nine and a half for the Lions. Total 48. Final score was 23-20. Now, before I give you the statistics, I want to hear your take real quick. It was a pretty entertaining game. Uh, I thought the Lions were going to wipe them out, but obviously they didn't. The Bears played a good game. I mean, Bears Matt showed Eberflew, out second half. Second half, they, they showed they out. They did. They did. Uh, Caleb, Caleb Williams had a very good second half. Uh, but, man, that Matt Eberfoot, man, he fucked that game up big time, man. You can't, you can't do mean, that, bro. You, you, you can't, you do, can't that, do that, man. You can't do that, bro. You got, and you Listen. got a timeout. X. It wasn't like they didn't have a timeout. Yeah. And it wasn't fourth down, which meant you could have spiked the ball. He could have done two things. Yeah. He could have called the timeout, set up his offense, spiked the ball. Hell, even throw a ball down the side and your guy catches it, goes out of bounds. I mean, even if you catch the ball down the middle, you still could spike the ball. You had 30 seconds left. You could have spiked the ball, called the timeout, ball down the field, catch it, sit down. Call the timeout, whatever way. All he different kind of shit. shit. That what is I, one of the what worst I would have done personally. I've seen in a, in a long time. Yeah, what, what I would have done personally, ever. I would have ran him up to the line. Yeah, spiked the ball. Would have been like twenty six seconds because he he got sacked with like thirty two. So give yeah. it take six eight seconds to line up, spike the ball. Now you got another play. You yep. still got a timeout X to try to win the yep. game, and you can yep. get closer for the time field goal. And, and and if you notice, Caleb Williams looking at the silence like, what are we going to do? Yeah. What are we going to do? And he, he didn't get nothing. This Nobody nigga told him anything. This nigga looked dumbfounded on the fucking sideline. Yeah. Yo, mean, I that, posted crazy. that shit immediately. Fire that motherfucker. I hate calling for people's jobs, but Me you too. can't do that, dog. Listen, man, I, 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 and you know, I was watching first take, and Stephen A. Smith was right. Chicago Bears should have left his ass at the airport what, in Michigan that after done. that game. You're fired. Go find your own the way. Airport. That's it. X, I'd have left him in the locker room. Man, I'd listen, I'll be on the left field. Him in the locker room. I'll be on that field the minute that game was over. Get the yeah, fuck get, out of here. You're not coming pack back. Pack up, dog. You're fired. 
How do you not know? Yo, how do you leave the game to a rookie quarterback to make the right decision? I mean, listen, it, I, listen it, it was crazy, but it was a good game, though. I, 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 the, the Bears did show out in the second half. Like I said, Caleb had a very good game. Second half, Keenan Allen, couple touchdowns. DJ Moore had a touchdown. So Moore he stepped did well. up. Yeah, Let me did. give you statistics before we go to the next game. Caleb, 20 for 39, 256, three touchdowns, no picks. Yeah. Caleb yep. ran four for 39 yards, was the lead in Russia. DJ Moore, eight for 97, one touchdown. Mm -hmm. We're going to pivot now to the Lions. Golf, 21 for 34, 221, two touchdowns, no picks. Montgomery, yep. 21, rushes, 88 yards. Yep. And Amar Say Brown, five receptions, 73 yards. And a 23-20 Detroit Lions victory that the Bears should at least tie that and took it to at overtime. At least. At least. I agree. All right, let's go at to least. game number two on Thanksgiving uh, at AT&T Stadium. My Dallas Bozos. <laughs> we found out to get a two-game a two -game winning streak. Two-and-nine New York Giants versus the four-and-seven Dallas Cowboys. The line was minus four-and-a-half for the boys, 37-and-a-half X. Boys won 27-20. And it could have kind of blew them out if they wanted yeah, to. But, you know, 27-20, yeah. your take on this game. Um, the Giants are shit, man. I mean, they started the game good. Defense played well for the most part the first half. Dallas, you know, Dallas, finally, Mike McCarthy figured out he has a running game. If he runs Rico Dowdle, Dowdle he who's nice. I like Dowdle. Yards, you know, so he finally figured that out. It looks like the defense now is coming around. Micah Parsons is healthy. He had a field day against <laughs> the Giants offense. Um, they had an interception there from uh from uh, over over showing, I think it was. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. dope. That changed the game. That changed the game for them. Yeah, company was up seven three yeah. before that play, so that was that was yeah. the game changer right there. Yeah, that was it. Um, <clears throat> it was a, it, it, the Cowboys did what they had to do. They beat up on the bad team. Finally, they get a home home victory. Yes, something they haven't done all year, which is important. Um, I still think if they can run the tables, which I doubt it, they may have a chance to sneak in, but. They're probably they're not better on the table with no fucking rush, bro. But no, it's they're good they're to not, see them. It's good to see them at least try to, to get the five hundred. Yeah, but the only thing is, if you start winning games, X, how can you improve in the draft? Well, that, that that's the. I I think Michael Parsons said his best. He's not looking. He's not looking towards the draft. He's looking to win no, games. No, no, and I course. think that's the right attitude to have. Of course, I think. You know, uh, Mike McCarthy, I still think, should be fired at the end of the oh, year. But gone. if the Cowboys... He's gone. He's gone. But, you know, Jerry Jones, you know, you don't know how Jerry Jones... Yeah, listen, that he's, yeah, listen, you can put it in the books. <laughs> Only reason why McCarthy's still there, because yeah. Jerry likes him. You know, yeah. he took a big liking to him that first season. He coached really good. Yeah. So he's not going to do him like that. Yeah. yeah. He's going to let him ride but, uh, out the season. And then he's going to... He might tell him to resign and make it look good. Just to make it he, look... He could do that, good. yeah. Well, remember, but he's he doesn't out. have to because... But he, he's on his last year of his contract anyway, so he doesn't have to even ask him to resign. He's out. Okay. So he's out. You know. Let me give you. But the Cowboys played. The, the Cowboys played a good game. I thought all around they played good defense, good offense. So that they played a good game finally yesterday. Right, right, right. Let me give you some numbers. Then we are gonna move on. Uh, Drew Lock, twenty-one for thirty-two, one seventy-eight. Uh, no touchdowns, one pick. Lock also ran for fifty-seven yards, one touchdown. Yeah. Neighbors, eight receptions, sixty-nine yards. He was happy. Lock was in the game. Got a yeah. lot of targets at him. Dropped about three balls, too, by the way. Rush yeah. 21 for 36, 195, one touchdown, no picks. Dow Dow, 22 rushes, 112, a touchdown. And uh, receiver Turpin, four receptions, 53 yards, as the Cowboys defeated the New York football giants 27-20 at the billion-dollar playpen. Yeah. Now we go on to Lambeau Field, which I thought should have been a great game. Ended up better than what I thought, but it really wasn't yeah. competitive until the end of the game. Five and six Miami Dolphins versus the eight and three Green Bay Packers. The line was three and a half for the Packers, 47 and a half. Packers won 30-17 X talk to us. Yeah, I agree with you. I thought this was going to be a much better game, much closer than what the score indicates. Green Bay dominated this game defensively from start to finish. They were in that backfield with Tua. Now, Tua did turn it up in the second half. <laughs> he threw for over 300 yards, a couple touchdowns. But that offensive line could not block for him. I mean, you, you could hear people in Miami holding their breath every time Shit. Tua went down. So this kid, he's going to get another concussion. Um, the, the Miami defense really pretty much they couldn't stop uh, Green Bay from doing whatever they wanted offensively. Josh Jacobs didn't have a big game. He didn't have to. 
I think Jordan Love uh, carried that team last night. Their defense played well. Um, you know, I, I, if, I think if Green Bay wanted to, they could have put up more points if they really wanted to. But, you know, it was cold weather. We all know Miami's allergic to cold weather. They don't like playing in it. So I expected this to, to, to for a Green Bay win. I just didn't expect it to be lopsided the way it yeah, was. Yeah, they always kind of get lit up every time it's under 49 degrees. Yeah. They just can't play in there. And then they be dressing up like they in hot weather. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they're not they're used to <laughs> yeah. playing in the cold weather. You can't be wearing no T-shirts out there at 32 degrees. You got guys that yeah. used to the cold weather that don't wear that shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. But anyway, exactly. Tua went 37 for 46, 365. Had a great game. A lot of yards, a lot of garbage yards in the second yeah. half. Two touchdowns, no interception. Moose start five for 19, no running game. John U. Smith had a good game receiving 10 for 113. Yeah. Pivot off to the Green Bay Packers. Jordan Love. 21 for 28, 274, two touchdowns, no picks. Josh Jacob, 19 rushes, 43 tough yards, though, X. Yeah. 43 touch touch yeah. yards, one yep. touchdown. Yep. And uh, Tucker Kraft, 60 sets to 78 yards as the Packers defeated the Finns, 30 to 17. Now we're going to go yep. to Arrowhead Stadium today in a real good game, a, a divisional game, 2-9 and nine Vegas, 10-1 and one Chiefs. The line was 13 and a half, 42 and a half. Chiefs won 19-17 in the game he was just talking about. Talk to yeah. us. This game was a lot better than I thought of my – listen, I, I feel – and I think Antonio Pierce might be going at the end of this year. Not his fault. They, they, they really pretty much stripped away his best players during the year. Um, but this game was a lot closer. But it goes to show you over the past few years, the Raiders have played the Chiefs tough, and they've beaten mm -hmm. them a couple times. Especially so, um, in Arrowhead. Especially in Arrowhead, yeah. Um, this was a good game. Pacheco's back. They got him back in the lineup with uh, with, uh, with, uh, with Hunter, uh, with, with Kareem Hunt. I think that's going to be a good one-two combo for them. You're still getting um, DeAndre Hopkins used to the system they run. So um, this was a tough game for them. The defense definitely showed out. I think that's the best defense in the league, Kansas City. Um, even though they didn't look against uh, like it against uh, Carolina last week, but you know you have those games. Um, the Raiders, the Raiders are just bad offensively, man. They, 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 they can't. I mean, they was, right they, the they was all right today. They moved. They was all right today, but but during the year, you know, they 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 need a quarterback bad. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, and, even and, even O'Connell did all right today. I don't even blame the shit on him today, bro. I mean, you can't blame the defense. Did their job also? I think, just I offense, think the man. offense did enough. They moved the ball. Connell threw for three forty, dog. Two touchdown, no interception against you. Said the best defense. To, to be so what honest, do you, you want him to do? But 17 is not enough against the Chiefs. You got to put up points. You got to make them score points with you. Well, they missed it was like a, three it, field goals. Was... They missed three field goals. That's not his fault. Well, you know, that's special teams. Now, listen, that's you made special... the three field goals. Now they got 26 points. That's hella good. Yeah, that's hella good. Yeah, yeah. But um, it, it was a better game than I expected. You know, um, I thought the Chiefs were going to roll by them, but obviously they didn't. They had a tough game. Uh, you know, Mahomes, of course, came up big when he had to come up big. So it was a good game. You know, I, th I was surprised by it. Right, right. Let me give you the numbers. Then we're going to go to games of the week. O'Connor, 23 for 35, 342 touchdown, no picks. McCormick, 12 rushes, 64 yards. And, yeah. and Bowers, 10 receptions, 140, one touchdown. Bowers, watch out for Bowers. Could be one yes. of the best tight oh, ends that, in the game. That, 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 guy, that guy's going to be, that guy, that guy's gonna be yeah, a beast, he is a beast. Brock He's kind of like a beast right now. Patrick Mahomes, 26 for 46, 306. One touchdown, no picks. Pacheco, seven rushes, 44 yards. He had that big scamper for like 30 yards. Yeah. That helped him out. And receiver D-hop, four receptions, 90 yards as the Chiefs defeated the Vegas Raiders, 19-17 at Arrowhead Stadium. Now we're going to games of the week. You ready for me, X? Let's go. Okay, we're going to start out in the Mercedes-Benz Dome. Seven and four, L.A. Chargers versus the six and five, Atlanta Falcons. The line is minus one for the Chargers, 47 and a half. Talk to us. I like this game. I like this game. I think the Chargers offense is now starting to come around to being explosive. Um, he still needs, I think he still needs receivers, at, at, at good receivers. But I still think they got a good running game. Atlanta's defense, to me, all season has been suspect. They're on um, and I off. I like their offense. They're on and off. Yeah, yeah they're on and off. Is, they either really this good is or the, really bad. Yeah, this is the perfect game for Jim Harbaugh to run that ball, smash mouth them with Gus Edwards, um, get some quick screen passes, some quick, uh, 
some quick underneath passes to his receivers, test that secondary, test that pass run, test that run defense. But we all know Atlanta, when they're on, they can put up points immediately. And this is a guy, I, I, I like the Chargers in this one because I think their defense is a lot better than, than, uh, than Atlanta's. I think they're going to stack up. They're going to make Kirk Cousins beat them on the outside. I don't think B. John Robinson is going to have a big game for them. I like the Chargers. It's going to be a close one, but I like the Chargers. You like the Chargers? Um, if, if Atlanta could stop that big offensive line, yeah, you know, and, and, and prevent a lot of huge plays, I think they can win this game. And they kind of have to want to win this game because they've been playing suspect of late, yeah. real suspect of late. The thing with the Chargers, though, if they can bully them up front on both sides, yeah. they'll win this game. Yeah, that's why I said I think it'll be a perfect game for Harbaugh yeah. to use his running game. Yeah, they're going to have to bully them because uh, Atlanta got all the talent. We already know Atlanta got all the talent, all the receivers, yeah. running back, quarterback, all yeah. that shit. So Chargers will have to bully them, eat the clock up, a long drives, get them off the field. I agree yeah. with you. I think they well better coach. So I'm going to go with the better coach, though I think Atlanta got the better players. All right, let's yeah. move on to U.S. Bank Stadium where the 6-5 and five Arizona Cardinals are playing the 9-2 and two Minnesota Vikings. The line is minus three and a half for the Vikings, 45. Talk to me, X. Minnesota's been struggling a lot lately on offense. Justin Jefferson hasn't done much the last few games, but they've been going more to the run game with Aaron Jones. Jordan Addison looked like he had a great game last week. Looked like he's starting to come around. They're starting to get uh, Hawkinson back to being where he was huge. Uh, before he got injured. Yeah. Um, Seattle is Seattle. Uh, no, no, it's not Seattle. Uh, Ari um, Arizona, Minnesota. Arizona. Arizona is baby who feet. they are. You talk about baby, baby feet. Baby feet. Baby feet. I got you, baby feet. <laughs> um, Arizona is who they are. They got, listen, if Arizona gets on top of them with Marvin Harrison in that passing game, it's going to be a long day for, for the Minnesota Vikings. I like the Vikings' defense, their pass rush, their secondary. They, they take a lot of chances, but they also give up a lot of big plays. I'm going to take Arizona here on the upset in a close one. I think their running game and those receivers are going to give Minnesota nightmares. Right, right. I see this game here a couple years ago. Same line. It was three with Kirk Cousins and Arizona beat them outright. Yeah. Uh, I don't say it's going to happen again, but you give me the three and a half. If I was a better man, I like the three and a half for Arizona. Okay. So just to cover, not saying they're going to win. They might lose by 24-21. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So if I'm a better man, I like those points. But if I had a gun in my head and I had to pick the winner, I'd probably say Minnesota would find a way. But I like Arizona with the point. If I was a better man, I'd bet Arizona. So it don't matter if they win or cover, that okay. would still be a win. Yeah. Okay, let's go out to uh, Payne Cole Stadium. As the 8-3 and three Steelers play the 4-7 and seven Cincinnati Bengals, the line is minus three for the Bengals. 48 total. Wow. Yeah, I guess, you know, uh, divisional game and the Bengals don't normally play them good over there. Your yeah. take on this game, one thing that you can say, the Bengals are fully healthy. They got all their receivers yeah. back, but they're still 4-7, yeah. and, the, and the Steelers are 8-3. Talk to us. Uh, the Bengals have been up and down all year. They'll, and they're going to – I'll tell you what, Pittsburgh better be ready to put up points. Field goals are not going to beat the Bengals. They better be ready to put up points. That secondary better be ready. They got uh, T. Higgins back healthy. Uh, you know, Jamar Chase been killing it all year. They've got a good running game. They're going to try to ram that ball down their throats. And, you know, Joe Burrow is Joe Burrow. Pittsburgh, of course, we know they rely on defense. Russ has been playing good but not great. Um, right. They're going to need <clears> – <throat> the defense is going to step up. They're going to need their offense to really step up. They're going to need to run Najee Harris and Warren. They're going to have to get to George Pickens out there. They're going to have to get Friar Muth involved. They're going to have to take shots down the field. This is not a good Bengals defense, especially the no, second The defense is suspect. Yeah, see, Offensively, I still think without Joe, without Joe yeah. Mixon, Joe Mixon is the reason why they four seven because they lost about five games, yeah. four games there, which yeah. they could have won less, like a field goal or less. Joe Mixon would have been the turnaround of that. They well, they missed Joe Mixon. Now you got to win basically in the air. They got a couple runners, but we seen them fumble in big games. Yeah, Chase once Brown, against yeah. Baltimore. So yeah, I mean they they okay, but they not know Joe Mixon and the defense got weaker. That's why they four and seven. Well, and to be honest with defense, you, you got to take the Steelers here with the points. You almost have to. Even though I think the Bengals might win because why would they make them favorite? But I yeah. just think you almost have to take the Steelers with the points. You'll take real quick. Well, yeah, yeah. 
like I said, this is a perfect defense for for Russell Wilson and that and that and those receivers to really get a lot of points up, a lot of yards. This is a very <clears throat> suspect secondary. Pass rush is not that great. I'm gonna go with Cincinnati. I think they're gonna put up enough points. Right. I don't think Pittsburgh can keep up with them well, points wise. It, it, it's a must win for Cincinnati. Yeah. They kind of have to roll the table, so yeah. I think they'll yeah. probably go win. But I'm gonna tease the Steelers up. I think it's gonna be close. Okay. But that's that's why I okay. said Pittsburgh. Okay, let's go to MTNT Stadium. As the nine and two Eagles are playing the eight and four Baltimore Ravens, and to me, the game of the week for me. Yeah. Ravens are minus three fifty one. The total talk to us. That's Ooh, Ravens, huh? Guys, I lost this, my voice, so I can't. You're not gonna get the energetic. This is uh, Al York. This is I a, lost my voice. This is a this is a great game. I think there's gonna be a lot of offense here. Um, I'm first. I'm gonna go with the Eagles. I think their defense is a lot better than what the Ravens. The Ravens have a very suspect secondary, very suspect front four. Can't seem to stop the run. They can get to the quarterback, but they can't seem to stop the run. They can't seem to stop receivers. And this is a team that's given up big leads in the fourth quarter, double-digit leads in the fourth quarter. They lost to two last place teams. We know what Philly's going to do. They're going to run Saquon. They're going to run Saquon, play action to Devontae Smith, to Goldert, or, 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 or to A.J. Brown. The board, that's the board a very, not going to run Derrick Henry? They're, no, they're going to run Derrick Henry, but 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 uh, oh no, they're going to run Derrick Henry. But I still think this this offense, this Eagles offense, is a lot better. They got a better offensive line, so they can stop them from getting to the quarterback. I think this is a big game for AJ Brown, Devontae Smith. I see them having huge games in the air because that secondary is so suspect. But they they're going to run Saquon. They're going to soften them up up front, and then they're going to go over the top on them. So I like the Eagles here. I still think there's going to be a field goal game. I think they went by field goal. Right, hold on. I'm trying to look something up real quick. Uh, how many games the Eagles are up on Washington? I'm trying to look it up here. I, I believe it's two games. Hold on. So, hold on. Let me make sure. Or two and a half games, something like that. Yeah, let me make sure so that before I spit this shit, I want to make sure I'm spitting the right shit. You feel me? Okay, they're up. They're nine and two. The commanders are seven and five. That's two and a half games. Two and a half so, games. So, the way I see shit, I see shit a little different. I see shit where, like, where they, they could afford to lose. Eagles could afford to lose. Okay. And still be first place. You know, they got that head to head against Washington. I'm yeah. not saying they want to lose, but they could afford to lose. There's a difference. You don't well, want to you lose, but you could afford to lose. Well, let me ask you this they're only a game behind detroit for home field advantage do you think they well you, like, they, they, that, that's reason to fight that, that, that's important no, no, remember no, no, that's, that's important to too home field. no no that's good that's a great point but the ravens right now are half a game behind the steelers lost the head-to-head -head. yeah they lose this one it's gonna really be like three games because they got to make that head-to-head -head back yeah. so it's a big game on both sides like you said eagles are going to chase for the best record yeah. Ravens trying to win their division, you know what I mean? And I don't think they're gonna catch Kansas City at eleven and one, and, and no. Kansas it's City having a head to head. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say Ravens win this game. I'm not I'm not okay. I don't know if they're gonna cover whatever. I'm gonna say Ravens prevail. That's what I'm gonna say. Okay, okay. Let's move on. High Mark Stadium, five and six. San Francisco 49 is nine and two. Buffalo Bills. The line is minus seven. Uh, it's a lot of injury report. If you don't know if Purdy's playing, you don't know if this dude's playing. So as yeah, a better man, you got to leave this game alone. Yeah. Like, you, you got to watch the game and maybe got do a live bet or something because you don't yeah. know who started. You know, you don't know if it's Joshua Dobbs. You don't know if it's Allen. You don't know if it's Purdy. And, yeah. and Buffalo, you know what Buffalo's putting out there. And the yeah. only way I think that, that the Niners are going to give the Bills a game is if Purdy's got to be out there. I agree. They got I McCaffrey and, and, back. They don't got Bosa, they also, but they got they McCaffrey back. I mean, they got McCaffrey yeah. back, so they got offensively, yeah. they got everybody suited up. Even I Jennings agree. is suited up. So the only yeah. way Niners got a chance to me of winning this game, Purdy has to suit up. I, I agree. Uh, this, uh, this is a must win for San Francisco if they want to stay in this wild card hunt. Um. Like you said, Purdy is questionable. We don't know what's going on with him. Is I, I don't know if Bosa's playing either. He might be questionable. Bosa's out, I heard. Bosa's out. Okay, 
So Bosa's out. So that defense is that defense is going to uh is gonna hurt. We all know how important uh, Nick Bosa is to mm -hmm. that defense, especially in the front, in the front four. You're right. San Francisco has all their weapons back. They need Purdy. Must win um, game too, by the way. This must is a must win game. game. This is a must win game in Buffalo, where they don't typically play well in cold weather either, like the Dolphins. Um, Josh Allen, we all know. We all know what Buffalo's going to want to do. They saw what happened last week with Josh Jacobs. They're going to try to run James Cook right down their throats, pound it out. Then have a couple passes over the top. I think Josh Allen is going to do that well. Remember, he's mobile. He can run, too. Um, but I'm going to go here with San Francisco. They're the desperate team. I think they're going to win a close one. Oh, you like them to win? I like them to win. I like them to spread. Win, I don't yeah. know about winning. I like them to win. I think, I think they're a desperate team. They're desperate. They want to stay in that playoff hunt, in that wild card hunt. I like San Purdy, Francisco to come out be here. Playing, though. You I know, agree. I agree. I like Joshua Dobbs. He did good things last year for the Minnesota Vikings, but yeah. this is a crazy ass game to put him in and expect him to win it. it you is. talk about basically one of the best teams in the AFC. So you got to have Purdy. That Purdy's accustomed to this kind of. But, you know, so, so when somebody gets desperate, man, they do things and, and they surprise you sometimes. Yeah, that's why I like so. to see Purdy in there. I like to see Purdy and let them get their best shot. But defensively, they hurt. And you said they got exposed last week. And yeah. then without both said it's not gonna get better, yeah. X. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to uh choose one and why. You ready, baby? I got you, brother. Guys, I'm sorry. I'm I'm not energetic like I'm used to. I I, I just ain't got my voice, man. Ah, you I ain't good, trying brother. to break my voice. I got the only way <laughs> that I can keep is by talking regular. Once I start that yeah. loud shit, it's gonna crack. Okay, right, you ready for me? We got you. I got you, brother. I'm ready. Okay. We're going to start off with running backs. Running backs. I got you. Ricky Williams, a.k.a. Williams, Little okay. Earl. All right. Or Priest Holmes, a.k.a. Hap. Who and why? I think they both went to Texas also. <laughs> I believe they both went to Texas. <laughs> um, <laughs> wow. Um, I like Priest Holmes here. Uh, I think Priest Holmes was a better all-around back, running the ball, catching the ball out the back. Great field. point. He does faster, catch that ball out the backfield. Faster player. Uh, you know, we all know what Ricky Williams was. He was a guy that once you got the lead, you lean on him, pound that ball, run the clock out. Ricky Williams wasn't the best uh, pass catcher out the backfield, wasn't even a great blocker also when you needed him to block. So this is why I'm going to take Priest Holmes. He's a lot more versatile, um, and he, he can go for the home run any time in the game. Right, but Ricky, Ricky, you know, Ricky, they don't call him Little Earl for nothing. No, no, I mean, of course. Ricky, yeah, of course, yeah. Ricky was a beast. I want to make that clear to everybody that yeah. Ricky William he, was, he was a beast. He was. He but was. I'm going to have to lean on Priest because of the multiple ways he can attack, and yeah. he also was a low-key power back. Yeah, like he, did he was. So many things that you kind of forget. He's a power back on the low, he too. Is. So I'm going to yes. fuck with the priest on this one, but barely, barely. All right, you. we're going to flip. I was going to do football again, but instead I'm going to pivot to baseball and come back to football. Okay. South Pole starting pitches. You ready? South Pole, okay. Andy Pettit, a.k.a. Andy. Or C.C. Sabathia, a.k.a. Dub. Who and why? <laughs> wow. First of, all, like that one, right? <laughs> first of all, it's not his big game Andy, okay? Big game Andy. That's his name. This is a good one. I, I like both guys, even though they were Yankees. I like both guys. But for this one, I'm going to lean with Andy Pettit and the reason why. <laughs> when the Yankees needed a big game in the World Series pitch, who did they go to? Andy Pettit, whether it was game five against Atlanta in 2006 <laughs> that he outdo John Smoltz. Put your answers in, was, guys. Or whether it was a game seven, it was Andy Pettit that always got the ball. Now, I love CeCe Sabathia. He had a double. So let me ask you, let me cross examine you real quick. So CeCe in a, a big game pitcher? CeCe is a big game pitcher, but Remember I Remember when he went to Andy. Milwaukee, that nigga pitched like, like yes, he did. He two, did. Three, he did. I agree. Games in the series. I agree. Cy Young I agree. He's a big winner. Andy never had a Cy Young. But Andy, CeCe got Andy more came up ball. big. I think, I think. I think if I'm correct. All right. Well, let me ask you this: 2006, 
and uh, not 2000, 1996. Do the Yankees win that game if Andy Pettit doesn't pitch that game? Oh, no. He, he pitched a hell of a game. Do the Yankees win a World well, Series a few well, years later if Andy Pettit, Pettit doesn't? Think it, Pettit got, a, I think he got five chips or four with the Yankees. Five he got the four Yankees. with the Yankees. But I don't know if he got another one there, but I know he got four with the Yankees. He got four with the Yankees. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and it was always him, and it was always him when they needed him to pitch the big no, no, game. That, it was always Andy that's that That's why went I can in. see you fuck with Andy. Yeah. But and I, I'm to not, take I'm nothing, not away, from nothing away from CeCe, CeCe I'm not taking was nothing away from CeCe. Too, dog. I, I love CeCe Sabathia. He had a, you know, Andy Pettit did it without having a devastating fastball the way uh, CeCe Sabathia did. And another thing, you know, another thing, Andy never was the best pitcher on his team. He never was, but he was CeCe the best pitcher was. in the postseason. You're right. But CeCe was. But, no, I just got to throw that out there. I'm just throwing no, facts. I agree, I agree with right. you. It's, it is facts. It is. And, uh, but... Who was the best pitcher for the Yankees in those World Series? It wasn't Clemens, who was the ace. It wasn't David Wells. It was Andy Pettit. Pettit came through. All right. So I'm I'm a I, well. My pick is I'm gonna go here with Andy. I think he pitched a lot of big games for the Yankees in the postseason. Uh, I love Sabathia. He was a big time pitcher. But I'm gonna go with Andy because he showed me a lot in the postseason during those years when the Yankees yeah, were yeah. in the postseason, yeah. and, winning and he, championships. He delivered and. If I'm if I call it with my heart, I'm going Andy because I'm yeah. thinking that. But if I'm calling it realistically, numbers, yeah, you know, main pitch on a team, Cy Young award, I'm going yeah. CC. Well, so let me I'm, I'm going go Andy. Not to confuse nobody, yeah. I'm going to say Andy because he won. He helped us win them four chips. He was a huge part of all those yes. championships. I'm going to leave yes. it like that. Well, let's just say this: I think Andy Pettit should have more consideration for the Hall of Fame than he gets. Facts. And he will. Probably the steroid shit might fuck him up a little, but... Yeah, probably. You know, we'll see. Okay, last but not least, defensive end. Defensive ends, I got you. Michael Strahan, a.k.a. Booty on Back. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Julius Peppers, a.k.a. Frazier. Who and why? <laughs> Ray Jones, you can take a sip. Uh, take a sip, baby. <laughs> no, no, I'm good. I'm good. I ran, I ran out of my shit. I gotta get some. Um, Julius Peppers or Michael Strahan? Well, we living in New York. I got to see more of Michael Strahan, so Facts. I've seen him, you know, dominate games and stuff. That's not they're taking nothing away from Julius Peppers, number one overall pick coming out of North Carolina, and his prime. Nobody could stay. He was unstoppable. Um, I think what hurt him was his longevity. You know, he played until he couldn't. He couldn't. Uh, he couldn't. Uh, you know, produce anymore. Right. But I love Julius Peppers, man. Julius Peppers was man. He was, uh, what was he, six seven with very long arms, and he couldn't Beast. get to the quarterback. He'll bat that ball down with no problem. Beast. Uh, but I'm going to go here with um, Michael Strahan. I think Strahan was just a tad bit better all around defensive player because if he couldn't get to the quarterback, he damn hell could stop the run, and he damn hell could cover a, a tight end out the backfield on screens and stuff. So uh, Strahan with the sacks, he set the all-time sack record on the season. Uh, broke Mark Gasno's record. That shit pains me to say that because he's a giant that broke a Jets record. But um, slightly here, I'm going to go with Strahan because he was a tad bit better all around than, than Julius Peppers. I love Michael Strahan, but Julius Peppers was a freak of nature, bro. Yeah, he was. And the he was. fact that he played on bad Carolina teams, a couple good ones. Yeah. Um, it's, you always heard his name like you watch yeah. a game with him yeah you always heard julius peppers no matter what kind of yeah. like reggie white am i comparing him okay reggie's the best all time secretary yeah, or the minister of defense but i'm gonna go with julius peppers here okay though i love me some straight hand though he retired after the chip did it right did it perfect Everything went yeah. perfect the way he did it, except Everything, yeah, his marriage. Did. You know, I don't want to get into that. Yeah, we don't want to get into that. That was another shit, story. Man. But I'm going with that. Julius Peppers here. Okay. X, close it out. Great show as always. Like I said, we lacking energy today because I, I I don't have it. I, my, nah, I have it, it's all good, brother. It's all good. I appreciate it. Yeah. Listen, just one more thing. Five years, 182 for Blake Snell by the Dodgers is crazy. The Dodgers are just printing money out to anybody they want Shit. and it's it it, 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 it it is crazy but i can see them doing it being that they have <clears> all those injuries to their pitchers last year and they still went on to win the world series 
Wow. So this only make this only wow. makes that pitching staff a lot better. No big throw. red. No big red. No Kershaw. Bueller came through though late. Bueller came through late. He came through late. Yama, Yamamoto came through late because Yamamoto was hurt a lot during the year. Yeah. After Bueller. But this makes that pitching staff a lot more better. Uh, man, man, they, they, man I, I guess they have a printing machine in the, in the Dodgers. They must have a printing because... machine because they, <laughs> I mean, a lot of that money, like yeah. my man said, yeah, Al, it's deferred. And I told him, do you know what deferred means? Yeah. It don't mean you ain't giving out the money. It means you can give it later on. But yeah, you still, still got to give it. Yeah. It's like a loan. It. Yeah, exactly. You still got to exactly. pay it. Same thing Otani yeah. did. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. But, brother, thank you for having me on. Um, I appreciate it. It was great. Always fun you to be know. here. Even, Listen, even man, we my need, voice we, is gone, right? We need to start calling <laughs> ESPN, Fox Sports, and CBS. Y'all dead. Yo, this is where the place to be at is going here. on Instagram. I'm going to start tackling Instagram. I already had a few cats I went at. To, All right. I went at. Make sure you get your account going. Uh, I'm going to start going. I'm going to start doing some lives, uh, some quick like lives, like two, three minutes lives. Short. Okay. It's called shorts. Okay. So I want you to be part of my short. No, me and Noah are going to do one tonight. So no get problem. your Instagram. I got you. Yeah, I'm going. X-Man in the building. Much love to the X-Man. Thank you, brother. I Happy belated Thanksgiving. You. Enjoy your last Thank food. You. If you got any food left. I still got man, another plate left. Brother, you know I'm going to get it. <laughs> that's gone, brother. That's gone. I ain't that this afternoon, me and my son. So <laughs> Okay, okay, brother. Stay up, my guy. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Much love to you and All your right, man, brother. X-Man, X-Man, uh, Lumberjack X, y'all know what it is. Now we going to the free plays, y'all. Like I said, excuse me for the energy. I don't want nobody saying, yo, Al, I seen you go through the motions the day after Thanksgiving. I mean, call it what you want, but I either don't do the show or this is what you get. And, and like I said, once I start to yell, my voice cracks. So I just got to talk regular. That's how I defeat this. But let's go to the free picks. Uh, hardcore facts. Me and Noah, the last six weeks, we give six picks a week. That's six times six, 36. With 26, eight, and two, all in the video, like Shug said, dancing. Go to the videos. You don't believe me? Go on the video. If you've been playing them, God bless you. You're making some money. You're making some money. There's no way at 26, 8, and 2, you're not making no money. And we're not going to stay this high. I'm going to be the first to tell you. We might shit the bed tonight. But I've been told y'all, y'all should have been hopped on. Y'all going to hop on when it's too late. I mean, not too late. We're going to still, we still going to win, but it's going to be hard to win at this pace right here. This is an all-star pace. 26, 8, and 2 is an all-star pace. All right, let me start with Noah Parker first. He likes James Madison minus 3.5 over Marshall. If you find it for 3, jump on it. The three is a way better number than 3.5, but I've seen 3.5 everywhere. James Madison, first game. Second game, he liked the California Bears plus 13 against a scary SMU team. SMU's been handling their business. The Bears are better than what their record is. So he likes the Bears plus 13. And last but not least, he likes Army minus six and a half. Army, like my Army fatigue hat versus UTSA. Army minus six and a half. Got that? Uh, I'm fighting on this game here. I want the Colts and I want the Ravens. Colts, Ravens, but I'm going to go with the Ravens. I got the coach written down, but the more I think about this game, the, this is like a, a really must win for the Ravens. This is a show out game for the Ravens right here, and they're at home, so I like that. If you can find a two, two and a half, I didn't see a two and a half. It's been three all over. I like a money line, but by a half a point, maybe at minus 130, if you can find it, I think worst case scenario, they win by Jason Tucker field goal. But the Eagles been the hottest team in football. So this is a scary bet here. But I'm going to fuck with the Ravens because I think they got less room to play with than the Eagles. Eagles got a nice little lead on everybody but the Lions. They are chasing the Lions for the best record in the conference. Ravens are behind a few teams. Buffalo, KC, Pittsburgh. Real important game for the Baltimore Ravens. So I'm taking the Ravens. I'm going to say at minus two and a half, I'm either going to find it or buy the hook at 130. 
I'm taking the Ravens at two and a half. I'm going to buy the hook, like I said, or whatever. That's my game number one. Six-point teaser. I'm going to take the Pittsburgh Steelers from my from plus three to plus six against the Bengals. Pittsburgh coming off a bad loss at Cleveland. Uh, if I'm correct, they got like a 10-day rest. Uh, Cincinnati can't stop the run. There's no way that. That if Pittsburgh lose this game, they're going to get blown out with a Mike Tomlin offense, Mike Tomlin team with 10 days rest against a team with no running defense. He, he's got to expose their weaknesses. Even if the Bengals win, I think it's going to be a close game. So I like the Steelers plus the nine. And the second half of that teaser, I'm hoping that uh, Sunshine is back for the Jacksonville Jaguars. I like the over. The over is 44 but I'm bringing it down to 38. We're going over 38. So the six-point teaser, you got Steelers plus nine, Texans over 38. And my two money line bets, my two money line bets are going to be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers money line versus Carolina. Bacon Mayfield been doing his thing. Evans, the defense has been playing. They went to Giant Stadium. That's not saying much, but they whipped their ass. Carolina played their tails off against the Chiefs, lost by three, came back late. I thought that was they shot they low. They shot they low right there. I think right now, I think the Bucks go in there and handle their motherfucking business. I want that tied up with the Denver Broncos money line on Monday night at home, Mile High Stadium, against the Cleveland Browns, who came off their biggest win of the year, beating the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think Cleveland might be flat in this game. Broncos find a way. Bo Nix's company, Sean Payton, they balling over there in Denver. So we got the money line, Bucks and Broncos. Those are your six plays. I don't want to hear you didn't get them. I don't want to hear you ain't make no money off of them because I can't. Listen, I'm giving them to you two, three days before the day. If y'all not making money, with y'all y'all the stupid motherfuckers because you know we betting them. Let's go to the spinoff. Brian Four leaves everybody eight wins. Chico Linston right behind him with seven. Let the best man win. Like I said, happy belated Thanksgiving. TGR Friday. No drinking and driving. Let's get it going, man. Let me throw something on. Then we're going to do this real quick. Give me a minute, guys. <laughs> we got the summary coming up, so don't go nowhere. Put your comments on. Yeah, don't be stingy with your comments. Speak your mind. Do your thing. Like I said, I lost my voice. I'm sorry, guys. I was yelling. I'm going to tell you what I was yelling to. I had two attack by Ola over 290 yards. In the second half, I was just hoping to get that. That was my big bet as of yesterday. I did some other shit, but I, I needed that. And, and I was just yelling. And before you know it, I lost my voice. I'm bugged out like that. Spin off coming up. Good luck to everybody. Before leaving everybody, eight wins. Chico right behind him with seven. And if I'm correct, Sess has five. Let's get it going. B4 and Chico right now fighting for that number one spot. Let's this again, guys. And they missed the fucking extra point. One through twenty. One through twenty. Let me marinate these boys. Good luck to everybody, baby. Like my new stand, the stand is fire. I spent like twenty-two dollars on it. Shit is fire. Oh my go! Oh my go! Here we go. If it comes out without me. It's no play. Here we go. Win the red. Got to win him. We got to win him. Let me move it back. Got a winner. 
winner is. Giveaway one, round six, winner is. Number nine. Number nine. We got Allen, baby. I think Allen got about three, four wins in round six. Uh, he almost did play. Then I hit him up again, and he said, fuck it. Let me get those last three numbers. So Allen's your winner. Allen, you lucky I came back at you. Because now you get a $45 gift, dog, for $10, $15. You came up, my guy. Salute to Allen. Giveaway two. Coming up, me and X Man kicked it about the uh, all the Thursday games. Starting over with the Lions, the Cowboys, and then the Packers. Then we went into the game in Arrowhead Stadium with the Chiefs with a lucky win. 1917, Vegas gave that game away like the Bears gave their game away. Bad team, bad results. We gave y'all the games of the week. You know how we do the games of the week. We break y'all down. We give y'all leans. Those ain't our picks. Those are the leans. You know, our picks are the free picks for me and Noah Parker. And I told you that me and Noah Parker, uh, 26, 8, and 2, uh, things not going to stay like that. I know it's not going to stay like that, but I'm going to enjoy this ride that we are. I'm going to enjoy it because, you know, when you call out, you know, and, and a lot of my picks, I, I can speak for me. A lot of my shit's freestyle. I do my shit right before the show. Like, I don't have time to be studying all, all those games, like, before, during the week, whatever. Like, I do that literally right before the show. But when you've been doing this for a while, it's like a rapper. You gotta learn. How to, you gotta know how to freestyle. You can't freestyle. You ain't no rapper, man. So those are freestyle. Those are freestyle picks right there. Every time I give out picks, they freestyle. But knowledge, knowledgeful freestyle picks. So, you know, hopefully you guys are making money with that. I'm hoping you guys are catching out on that. I'm hoping you guys had a great Thanksgiving. 
Uh, enjoy your holidays. New Year's coming up. I can't believe 2025 is coming up. You know the 2025 out. Your cast is coming out. You already know. They're, they're already going to get printed real soon. Um, also, like I said, go to Instagram. I'm going to start unloading on Instagram. I already could tell I'm going to have a lot of haters there. You know what? Let them come on, baby. And like my man said, if they ain't talking about you, then you ain't doing nothing, man. You know what I'm saying? Controversy sells. You know what I mean? And if they want to, you know, if they want to go against what I'm thinking and whatever, man, just don't be, don't be tough, no, talking no tough man shit. Like you ready to do something. I don't mind if you disagree with me, but if you start trying to call me out, dumbass, and all this other shit, two things are going to happen. I'm either going to call you out, like where, where you at, or I'm just going to block you. But after the end of the day, like I said, you know what I mean? I'm going to do what I do, man, and, and to the best of my ability. And I've been doing this for years. Y'all who know me know I've been doing this for real, man. Like, I do this for real. Like, like eight, seven years old, like, under my pops. My pops used to, like, hold me with the game on and just tell me players and just coach me through the whole shit. And I'm learning seven, eight years old about baseball. That's what I that was my first love, baseball. And really knowing players, knowing what they potential, knowing what, what school they came from, uh, the, the position they play best. You know, and that's just something that stood with me no matter what I went through. If I went through it on life, if I went through it on the streets, if I went through it getting wet up, whatever, whatever. Sports always stood with me no matter what I did. I went in the can, sports stood with me. Because when you about something and you are something, that's what you're going to be. So no matter where you put me at, I'm going with a bunch of sports knowledge. When I go to heaven, I'm going to be battling guys in heaven. Sports knowledge was good. Who wants it? You feel me? And with that, y'all keep your head up, Al Your Sports. And like I said, like I said on the message of the day, love the people, guys, that are loving you right in front of you. Don't take them for granted. Stop chasing those people that are not loving you. And you know who the fuck I'm talking about. Stop chasing them. If you're chasing them, it's because they don't feel the same about you the way you feel about them. Do the math. Get your smarts up. Take care of the people who's in front of you, man. Show them love, like your dog. Like, you know how your dog's always coming on to you? Dog is as loyal as fuck. And the way you look, you hug your dog back and you kiss your dog, I'm not saying your family's is dogs. I'm saying the loyalty part of it. Show them love like you show the dog that's on you. Fuck chasing motherfuckers. And with that, hold your head. How your sports to roar truth. I'm on the gram hard now. Come check your boy. One love.